in that regard, the look and the door and the door. What the hell did I just read? It should be a crime. Hello book reading friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new, my name is Melanie and today I am here with a reading vlog for From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. So yes, I read From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. In today's video, you will see my journey reading both From Blood and Ash and A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. When I saw people raving about From Blood and Ash, I was both excited for them, but I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. So after being gifted both of these books by my awesome friend, Jaleesa. I just knew I had to read them at some point in November. So I decided to film my experience reading both of these books because I feel they are the hype at the moment. In From Blood and Ash, we follow Poppy, who is a maiden, and she has been chosen by the gods from the womb to fulfill this role in the kingdom, which essentially is tied to every ascension of the kingdom. So she is seen as this very holy figure. She cannot be touched. She cannot be addressed. She cannot be a approached, she is off limits to absolutely everyone in the kingdom. So to ensure her safety and to ensure her ascension, the king and queen assign her a royal guard to again ensure that she makes the day of her ascension. And once she meets Hawk Flynn, who has said guard, she starts feeling things that have been long forbidden and she has never felt before, like lust, passion, and a yearn for something else where she starts really questioning everything that she has been taught for her entire life. And that is essentially essentially what the series is about. I will say no more because everything else is for the actual reading vlog, which will be spoiler free. If you know anything about me, all of my reading vlogs are spoiler free. You're safe. You're safe. Okay. You're in the inner circle. You're okay. If you have yet to subscribe to my channel, don't forget to do so down below for more bookish content. I am constantly uploading videos that I am sure you do not want to miss. I am also live streaming throughout the week, doing my weekly reading sprints, which in December will be both Wednesdays and Fridays. So we can all squeeze in a lot of reading. So I'm sure you won't want to miss that as well. I also have all of my social media links down below. I am specially active on Twitter and my Amazon wish list is also linked down below in case you want to check it out. So yeah, if you want to know all of my thoughts on these two books, I will let past Melanie take it away, letting you know all her thoughts. And at the end, there will be a wrap up portion, letting you know all of my final thoughts, my ratings and everything about these two books. So without further ado, let's get right started. Hello everyone, welcome to my floor. We are sitting in front of the bookshelves. I have From Blood and Ash right here and I'm gonna be starting this in a little bit. I just wanted to show you that I got a few packages and I wanted to show you exactly what I got. I got this book kindly sent to me, my wish list, so thank you so, so much. And the book that I got is actually Wilder Girls by Rory Power. I have actually never read anything Rory Power, but I've heard incredible things. I know Molly absolutely loves Rory Power's books. So I'm just excited to get into this. And actually, Molly has a Wilder Girls bookmark, so it's really cute. The color pattern is gorgeous, so if you're interested in Molly's bookmarks, I will leave them linked down below. So that is, look at that moment. That's so cool. And this book was sent to me by Camila from Boros and Books, and she says, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. It was my favorite read of 2019, and once you read it, please shoot me a DM because I would love to discuss it, and I surely will once I read this book. So thank you so much, Camila, for sending me Wilder Girls. Well, guess that this book has a lot of, like, body horror aspects to it. I don't think it's horror at all, but I really think it'll be like body gore. So I'm excited for this one, honestly, because I've heard incredible things about this book and the cover is gorgeous. I, oh, it has the girl on the spine too. I hadn't seen that. I won't even say the synopsis of this book because I talk about this book way too many times. I am hosting the Thorns and Roses along, which is a read along for the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Maas. I will link you down below to my announcement video, but since we are starting that read along, along in December with the first book, Court of Thorns and Roses, finally decided to go ahead and get myself a copy. And I got myself the new copies of Akotar. And I will say it's a lot prettier in person than it is in the pictures. And then finally for my book of the month, I got these two books right here. You'd recognize probably These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, which is her debut novel actually, which is super exciting. I did not think book of the month was gonna have this book. And this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling. And the year is 1926 in Shanghai. So everything set in Shanghai with like rival gangs. And then I've got Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. It has the trope of a book within a book, which I personally enjoy. Now I'm going to start reading from Blood and Ash because I am excited. And I hope you all don't mind like a little unboxing situation, haul situation in a reading vlog. I think that makes it more exciting, but yeah. <laughs> Hi. 
Hello everyone, so <laughs> embarrassing. I don't know when's the last time that I updated y'all, but that one time that I said I was gonna read from Blood and Ash, yeah, uh, <laughs> I just read one lonely page. I mean, I did put a tab in, so that's good, but I've only read one page, so I haven't really made any progress into From Blood and Ash. So I am about to hop onto my weekly reading sprint. It is Friday. When did I start From Blood and Ash? Like two days ago, supposedly. But yeah, the book's gonna get read. I just have been all over the place. And today I had to upload a video, which is my Crescent City reading vlog. So that was uh, the priority. So yeah, tonight on the reading sprints, I'm gonna officially start. Officially, what what happened there? I'm going to <clears throat> me 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 officially start from Blood and Ash, and I'm gonna be there with my girls. I'm gonna be with Molly and Christine and Jalisa, and it's gonna be a great time. And there's the beautiful book from Blood and Ash, and I might just real quickly snatch that from my. Oh, it's so pretty. So I haven't made that much progress, but I am on page 31. And they said that there is a little thing going on in the kingdom where a lot of people don't think that the current queen and king are the rightful heirs of the throne, but rather this person that calls themselves Prince Castile, that again is calling himself the rightful heir to the kingdom. I have a theory, and if I am right, so we haven't even met Hawk yet, which is the character, one of the characters that is in the synopsis of the book who's like the guard that is supposed to help Poppy with her ascension. What if Hawk is Prince Castile? I know it's a stretch. I know it's like crazy, but like hear me out. What if he is Prince Castile? That'd be a cute moment. That'd be cute actually. If he is, <laughs> if he is, I think I can graduate from like possible theory maker. 10 out of 10 for me if I'm right. All right, so I am still in the middle of my sprint. However, I've just hit page 105 and the book is so good so far. It definitely starts out very, very steamy. And honestly, I kind of needed me some of that. So the beginning of the book is awesome. And then we are starting to get a little bit more insight into how Poppy's powers work. Uh, she has this power where she can sense people's pain. And I'm guessing that's something that the gods have granted her for being a maiden. We are also getting a little bit more insight insight into how being a maiden works. So it's interesting to kind of find out how that choosing process, like how that process of elimination works into seeing who exactly the maiden is going to be. And then we also just had a scene with, what's his name? Lord Mazim. And I despise this guy already. Like he's been on like five pages maybe. And I'm mad. Like I've started tabbing orange. I even have like an orange post-it because this character is making me mad mad. This character is doing things to Poppy without her consent. I'm excited to keep finding out how this world works. And I feel like it's really gonna get crazy. All right, everyone. I cannot remember when's the last time that I updated you, but I just finished filming. As you can see, I actually need to go and eat something. It is currently 2.20 PM and I have Molly sprint at three, I am gonna be a guest on her channel. Point is, I haven't really read anything. I do have From Blood and Ash right here, as you can see. I am on page 206, which I believe is where I was when I last updated you. I may be completely off, but hopefully uh, during Molly's sprint, I'll be able to read a little bit over 100 pages. So yeah, hopefully I'll be able to read lots of From Blood and Ash today so I can jump soon enough into the second book. And then yeah, I also need my glasses because I cannot see for shit, okay? Okay, everyone, so <laughs> I finished from Blood and Ash last night. How do I break this down for you? Like I've said a million times, I finished from Blood and Ash last night. And oh my God, I know I've sucked at updating y'all with this book. It's just been like really on and off, trying to find time to read with everything else that I need to do. That last night I was like, I, I need to sit down, I need to finish this book. I had an energy drink and I completely forgot that I was vlogging until the very, very end of the book. So excuse me for not having more updates, but this book messed me up to the point 
point where I was last night, I can't remember what page I was on. I think I was on page 320, if I'm not mistaken. I could not stop reading from that point on. I think from chapter 24 onwards, this book starts getting hella action-packed, hella crazy, super fast-paced. And I, I was, I was living, I was shocked. And it just, I couldn't put it down. I was sending voice notes to Jaleesa all night long and to Kristen because we were technically buddy reading this book and we are gonna buddy read the second book also to the point where I sent voice notes to them yelling at 2 a.m. in the morning when everyone in my house was asleep which was probably not the best idea so as to my final review final thoughts on the first book on From Blood and Ash I I have very mixed feelings about this book and I'll tell you why I will say though the book starts off and it starts off right off the bat it starts off super interesting it literally hooks you in right away and so you can't really stop reading because you're like oh my god i am eating them pages and then as i kept reading it hit a point where it was kind of monotonous and it was not as interesting now this ascension is very mysterious throughout the whole book you don't really know what the ascension is or like how she is as the maiden connected to the ascension until the very end of the book and it was worth every single second i was literally texting jaleesa as i read and i was like there must be something more to this maiden thing because it has been so vague throughout the entire book and I doubt this is like the entire thing like there's there has to be more and there is certainly more at the end and the way it all connected it just made so much sense and just the way that everything was right there and I couldn't see it oh my god there were things that I predicted with this book but overall all of the plot twists and their majority were completely unexpected. The ALA did that. On the topic of characters, beside Poppy and Hawk, who are like our main, main characters, we do have certain side characters that were really important to the story, as was Victor, who was kind of Poppy's father figure throughout the entirety of the book and the relationship that they had was truly great. I honestly loved their dynamic and I loved that he wanted to take care of her not only because she was the maiden but because their relationship developed into something more and they truly bonded in a way that she wished he'd bonded with her father when she was younger and the way that he'd wanted to bond with a daughter at some point of his life and so I really liked how each of them fulfilled those shoes for the other because the dynamic was just really really nice to read about in this world where Poppy truly has no choice and that she feels truly alone. Then there was also Rylan, who was her personal guard. I don't know if I was supposed to care for these characters because I certainly didn't. I truly only cared for the main, main characters in this book, but every other side character to me just completely flew past me and I didn't care regardless of what was happening to them or around them. I didn't bond with any of them and I didn't understand the purpose of them being in the story because I feel like they were just there for plot progression and like plot points and I think this is just me being overly critical because I did read from Blood and Ash after reading Crescent City and so the friendship in Crescent City is done so incredibly well that I think it has ruined every fantasy for me what friendship is kind of big and in this book it was supposed to be like a big thing but I didn't really see the connection between these characters like I feel that aspect of it was really forced and I was not there for it. But beside that, we have other characters like the Duchess and the Duke and Lord Mazine, who I just hate. I despise all of them. They were truly horrible to Poppy. The fact that Poppy knows no other life but to follow along with everyone's rules and she has absolutely no say into what goes on in her life and she can't really choose to do anything was just absolutely horrible and I felt for her for the entire book because Poppy is the type of character that you can see the strength behind her eyes and you can see since this is told in first person you can see everything that Poppy truly wants to do or say and she really just wants to be free in a world where freedom is unfortunately not that big of a thing. I will say the pacing of the story is pretty consistent throughout the book it's just that I didn't really care for certain events and if you know anything about me I love to care for characters I love to cry I love to be mad in books like I love to feel emotion when I'm reading and there were a lot of scenes in which I was completely indifferent so I think it was truly just a personal thing I think the voice of this book is sometimes new adult to adult ish but also since it's first person it's easy to kind of misunderstand that voice and think that it's YA the beginning and ending portions to me made more sense in regards to voice than the middle part and again it's not in regards 
regards to inconsistency, I think it's just Poppy's mentality as a character. I will say the world building in this book is consistent until it gets kind of vague, but it all ties in at the end and it's so incredible. I know it utilizes creatures that are very common in like the paranormal scene. Like we've got what would be vampires, what would be werewolves, what would be kind of newly turned vampires. We have all of those elements in this book, but the way that JLA combined all of these elements to seem brand new to her story was just so so great. I just absolutely loved the Atlanteans and the Vampire, and I absolutely loved the Woven, and I loved the Craven, and I loved the Ascended. All of these terms, if you've read the book, you know, if you're gonna read the book, you'll find out. I do have to say, my favorite character is Hawk. Like, there's just absolutely no doubt about it. There's just something about Hawk that gets to me. He is so smooth, he is so smart, he is so strong, and he's so charming. He's just all of the things that I love in a male love interest all mixed into one. I did start a Kingdom of Flesh and Fire yesterday. Technically not yesterday, it was technically like at 3 a.m. But I did start this book. I'm currently on page 66. And I will say, right off the bat, just a little update 60 pages in. This is already so much better. Like the writing has improved so much. And again, I think it has a lot to do with Poppy as the main character. Because in that first book, she is very naive. She does not know the way of the world. She does not know any Thing. She has a choice over nothing. So once this book starts, it picks up right after From Blood and Ash ended. So the same exact line that the first book ends, it's the first line in this book, which I personally love. And given the events of the first book, which were all really crazy and traumatizing, but also really good for Poppy to grow, once this book starts, you can see a shift in tone. And I am liking the writing in this book so much better. So I will log off for now. I will keep reading and and hopefully I'll have an update for y'all soon. and reading and reading and not really being able to stop reading this book like it just reads so easily and I am loving every second of it like I have to be honest I am also adoring Castile I think Castile Denier will be the end of me and I'm not even kidding like it's hard for me to actually find fictional boyfriends to the point where I'm like I, you, I need to find the real you. And I think Castile is one of those people. I'm just like, minus the killing and the brutality and like the torturing. Like, let's put all that aside. He is just so, he is just such a great character. Like I would argue Castile is probably my favorite character so far. The way that he addresses Poppy and he talks to her and he is so accepting and he is trying to constantly push her into what she needs to be. We are also getting a lot of world building in this book. I think the questions that were left unanswered in the first book are definitely being addressed and answered in this book in a way that not only is it expanding the world of the series, but it's also again answering some questions that left me hella intrigued in the first book. And I really love the way that JLA is grabbing all of these paranormal fantastical creatures and crafting them in a way that works for her and her story and her plot. And we we are seeing creatures like vampires and werewolves. We are also seeing what would be dragons and sirens or mermaids like waterfall. And I just love the way that they fit into this story and how it's expanding on this world that in the first book was so condensed because we are only being shown what Poppy knows. And so now that Poppy is finding out more information, as a reader, we are given a more insider's perspective into how this entire world works. And it's been a super fun journey to find that out with Poppy. I'm just truly loving this book. The character dynamics in this book are 
are just so great and the complaint that I had in the first book of not really caring for the side characters is something that has been mended in this book and it just has a lot to do with the way that Poppy aligns more with the side characters than the side characters that we had in From Blood and Ash. JLA has definitely surprised me with these battle scenes because the description has been great and I've also been worried for these characters because I'm like y'all better not die okay y'all better be fine y'all better heal or something because I would riot if anything happened to any of you but yeah it is 3 a.m this is my update for now I'll take my makeup off it'll be great and then I'll just lounge for a little bit and then I'll keep reading tomorrow what the hell just happened I just finished a Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. I didn't even vlog anything. What the hell just happened? What the hell did I just read? I have no words. What the hell just happened? All right, everyone. Thank you for coming along with me and thank you, Paz Melanie, for letting the people know all your thoughts. However, it is Time for me, okay? Present Melody to tell you all of her thoughts, how she feels, her ratings. I feel like I genuinely sucked at updating you in a kingdom of flesh and fire because, because I was just too into it. I was just too into it and I couldn't bring myself to turn on my camera. I was into deep at that point. And I'm sorry if y'all didn't get that many updates, but don't worry because present me has got you. I got you. Let me start with From Blood and Ash, the first book. I have talked about this book more than I have the second one, only because the second one is spoilery. I had several issues with this book, despite me loving it. Let me preface this by saying I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars which is still an incredible rating. Like four stars for me is like, you had all the potential to be a five star, but there were some things that were lacking for me or some things that could be fixed. So there's room for improvement, especially if it's a series for them to get better as they go along. First thing was the writing. And the writing I think makes sense if I explain it like this. The writing in this book felt very childish at times, very naive, very innocent, all of the synonyms you can find on the interwebs. And sometimes I felt like I was reading stuff that was quotable just for the sake of there being something quotable. I do feel because this book is told in first person, it is told from Poppy's perspective. Poppy is a character who has grown up very sheltered. She has grown up not knowing the ways of the world the way that other people would. And because of that, the way that the book was narrated didn't feel the most mature at times, although this book could be categorized as a new adult adult. The writing style, the voice did not fit that at times, and it totally has to do with the way that Poppy thinks and the way that Poppy behaves in this book. But I will say, as the book progresses and as Poppy starts developing as a character and she starts growing, you do start seeing a shift in voice and you start seeing an improvement to that writing. It was nice in a way to see a writing that I wasn't particularly in love with to grow like that because you know it was not an unintentional thing that was put into this book but rather something that was made deliberately to fit the mentality of this character and along the lines of Poppy being very innocent and naive she is still a very strong character she is very decided and she is very independent and that is not a side of her that is being shown a lot at the beginning of the book because Poppy is still very much in in wraps of the mentality that she has been brought up in and she's not really questioning the way that the world works. Poppy is not afraid to go out there and do things herself, nor Poppy is dependent in a way of men to do anything for her. Then for the side characters, and that is I guess another one of my complaints in a way, the only side character that I truly cared about was Tawny, which is Poppy's friend. Tawny was such a great side character. Tawny was like the gossipy, just like super supportive best friend who's always there being like, girl, you did not just say that. She's gonna go along with all of her mischief and she is gonna butt in when she wants. And I just loved Tawny, okay? Tawny deserves all the rights. And that is one complaint that I had with this book. There were several deaths that I was supposed to care about and I did not. Like, I was just over here being like, should I 
care? Like, should I be crying right now? Because you literally gave me two scenes with this side character and now Poppy is mourning and I don't understand why I should care because I have no reason, I have been given no reason to care. The last 200 pages, however, were absolutely insane. Like, Ms. JLA did that. Ms. JLA really said, oh, so you think you don't love this book? And then she drops 200 pages that are absolutely insane, and she changes your mind, and she rocks your world, and she snatches your wigs, and she runs away with them, and then she drops them to the floor, stumps on them a little bit, and then says, you're welcome. And I am okay with it. So those 200 pages, 10 out of 10. Remember every complaint I had on the first book? Get them out of your brain for this one because they do not exist. They are not present. They have flown away. I gave this book five out of five stars. Why? Because it deserves them. The fact that I don't have a third book with me right now is unacceptable because how dare she make an ending that good and not drop the third book immediately after this. It should be a crime. Immediately we kick off this book and the writing is so much better. Let me just gather myself. I feel like I'm being too energetic. It has everything to do with the fact that Poppy in this book feels so much more mature already. Since the beginning, since page one, it reads differently than from Blood and Ash. I don't know if this is just me being insane and maybe I just went into it with preconceived thoughts that this would be better than from Blood and Ash, but the writing felt completely different from the start and I was thankful for it because I could see the character development that we got with Poppy because the way that she was thinking was completely different. So the shift in voice is not unearned, it's very much earned, and I absolutely loved that about the beginning of this book. In this book, we also get Castile Denier, as if it wasn't enough with Hawk in the first book. We get Castile in this book. We get a very hunky, sexy personality, very teasing, very honest, but also very scheming. I love every bit of it. And then also, Castile is not afraid to tell Poppy, you know what, princess, make me feel incompetent and kill more people than me. Every question you have in the first book that was left unanswered, like what truly is the Ascension? And then how does this world work? And what is this other world that we're talking about? And what is this other city and these other races? How does it all work? It is all explained in this book. So I love how this book ties up so nicely with the first book and there is so much more context and explanation. I will also say the romance in this book is incredible because it is the perfect mix between love and hate. I don't really know how to talk about this book without fangirling, it's not possible. The fight sequences we get in this book are great. The character dynamics are incredible. Does everyone on the planet who's read this book wish for this to be polyamorous? Yes. Am I included? Probably. I wouldn't really mind it. So I personally think the second book is by miles better than the first book. That's why I gave it a five star instead of a four star. I think there was a lot of improvement to be made in regards to the voice and the writing and then the character, the craft of character that happened in the first book and all of that truly was fixed in the second book and I can appreciate that in and out of itself. I just am here for all of this. I know there's a lot of people who gave up in the first book because of that same thing because Poppy felt very naive and the writing was not their favorite. However, I would just say give it a try because the second book truly gets a lot better in all of those terms that you'll start seeing the improvement and you'll be able to push through and hopefully love the books. And that is all I have for you guys today. I hope it made sense. I don't think I can speak currently when I talk about these books because they are a lot. They are quite a lot. They make my heart want to burst. However, those are all the books I have. I hope you enjoyed the video. Comment down below if you've read From Blood and Ash, if you are planning to. I know there's a lot of talk around these books at the moment. So let me know all your thoughts down below. And if you reached the end of the video, you know what? Comment down below a broken heart emoji because it's not fair that we don't have a third book out yet. If you have yet to subscribe to my channel, don't forget to do so down below for more bookish content. Again, I am constantly uploading videos that I am sure you do not want to miss, as well as live streaming throughout the week, doing my weekly reading sprints. You can also follow me on all of my social medias, which are always linked down below as well as my Amazon wishlist in case you want to support me and my channel and give me a book. And yeah, 
That is it for today. I love all of you. I hope this made sense. I love you all and I will see you on the next one. Bye guys.